Hello, everyone. I hope you can all hear me well here. I would like to welcome you all to a surf side event, youth participation, how to foster youth participation in local communities. Side event is organized by Association for Culture and Education, FINA, acting as surf point. This is national contract point of the program surf in Slovenia with the help of two other national contract points in Spain and Lithuania. Surf program aims to protect and promote union rights and values as enshrined in the EU treaties and the Charter of Fundamental Rights. Before we start, I would just like to say that the beginning and the end part of the event will be filmed. The middle part where all of you will be active and expressing also your uh, opinions, views and uh, data will be just internal and not recorded. Before we start, because I'm far and currently here in Koper where we are, it's raining. Uh, I, I decided we will start with a bit uh, finger exercise. So on your probably right side, you have a chat box. And just think of the first thing that comes to your mind when you think about your local community. So the place you are at with one word, how would you describe it to everyone else? And if you can write it in the chat so that we know that you understand uh, what it is, how to use chat and so on. You have a small amount of time and I invite you all. Thank you all. What I'm reading is there's a lot of things coming, a bit of green, a bit of blue, uh, sunny, dynamic, multicultural, uh, then it's nature, it's family, togetherness, cultural heritage, and so on. So usually our local environments are really the place that is close to our heart that we feel mostly passionate about, but also mostly maybe frustrated about. Uh, today, we will talk about how in these local communities, youth fits in and why they are important and they matter because it is a really important condition for the development of local community, of local democracy, of community governance, and also to strive for some community change. During this hour and a half that we will spend together, we will present three good practices that we selected that are co-financed by different EU funding programs. And then we will work with all of you to discuss ideas, to look for synergies, approaches, and also available funds to use in order to foster your participation in local communities. But first, I would like to share with you all a welcome by Gilles Pelayo, Head of Unit Citizens and EU Values at EASEA. Good morning, dear participants. I'm very happy to welcome you to this uh, session of the European Weeks of Regions and uh, Cities organized by our Slovenian National uh, Contact Point. It will be a very good opportunity to show how the uh, CHAT program, the Citizens' Equality, Rights and Values program, that's a new program, supports grassroots uh, projects and initiatives, be it from uh, civil society organizations or from uh, local authorities. It's, uh, it's a new program that promotes democratic engagement, citizens' participation, and is the main program within the European Union supporting uh, fundamental rights and values. So I, I really wish you a very good uh, session this morning and uh, I look forward to uh, the report on your session this morning. 
that was a dynamic uh, introduction, let's say like this. Uh, the first be best practice we would like to share with you comes from Spain, from City Council of Altea. We have with us today Paloma Verdu, but before we talk, we have a video greeting by the councillor Maria Antonia Lavios. Adios, Councilwoman for the European Project Office for Municipality of Altea. First of all, on behalf of Municipality of Altea, I would like to thank personally the Punto Europeo de la Ciudadanía and the Association for Culture and Education in Slovenia for inviting us here today. Since the very beginning of the European Project Office, we are the municipality believe that the key to a better future is young people. This is the reason why Euraldea offers a wide range of services focusing on economic and social development. It develops activities in key sectors that look to the future, innovation, entrepreneurship, commerce, environment, energy, smart cities, education and training, culture and heritage urban mobility, social inclusion, environment, health and quality. More than 100 young people are already participating in different European projects. In order to foster economic development beyond education and employment, the municipality has implemented Euraltea and offers the day key to the development of European projects for the city and its citizens. To do so, Euraltea has as its most important aim to find and create a range of opportunities for its young citizens. Euraltea is a young public organization that reflects their willingness to look to the future in local areas and to develop a global way of thinking that thinking towards the European Union means sharing experience, ways of working, ideas and good practices. As a conclusion, I believe that we have the missing of inviting young people into the social, cultural and educational life of their communities. To that purpose, the office collaborates with many local, regional, national and European schools, companies, organizations and institutions in order to make Europe more able to all. Thank you. Thank you for that. Mrs. Verdu, you come from the city of Altea. Can you tell us before we start how is youth in the city and what kind of projects you do, just to give us a bit of information, geographical, where is Altea, how, how big is it, and so on, just so that we know about what kind of city we are talking about. Okay, thank you, Katja. Um, well, Altea is a town about 23,000 people and we are located at the Mediterranean. Everybody knows where Valencia is. So Valencia and Alicante. So we at that, at that bit, just very close to Valencia, basically in the middle. We are a coast town, so we get lots of tourism. And Altea is like um, one of these um, towns from a postcard. And I have to say that because I'm not originally from here and I ended moving down here because it's a beautiful place to visit and a beautiful place just to do lots of things. As, as a municipality, we created this office, the European Projects Office, about five years ago. And we started working with the young people since the very beginning. And well, in all these years, finally, we we managed to, to get involved in many projects, different proposals, different programs, not always the same ones. And the, the civic, the youngest above all are the ones that demand this kind of project. So I don't know. Um, I just think we are now in the sweet spot where everybody, all the young people from the municipality comes to us uh, asking and demanding mobilities and projects for young people. So we're quite, quite pleased on that. 
Uh, we invited you initially here because of the project Volonteo. It's volunteering citizens as a response to social COVID-19 crisis, which focuses on promoting volunteerism as civic response. Can you please tell us uh, more about the project and how actually young people were included? Yeah, okay. Well, first of all, let me just say that this initiative that we have uh, fulfills the objective that the SURF program um, proposed since through exchanges between what it is young people from different countries, we try to reinforce a mutual, mutual understanding and tolerance. And we give the young people the opportunity to broaden their perspective and develop a sense of European belonging and identity. Obviously for us, the, the first, the target for this project Volunteo um, is and are young, young Europeans as we are a network of uh, eight towns. So I do believe that this present network of town complements the three lines of action of the EU young for young people, just attracting, connecting and empowering. So basically we managed to get involved a lot of young people because our partners for this network, most of them come from another network, from another projects that we've been involved and we managed to create like a family. So probably the public that we're talking to will, uh, will be thinking, how do you do this? Well, you do this with a lot of work, but when, once you get involved in a network, uh, you creating synergies and one program- When you are saying other... network, you mean other municipalities, NGOs? Correct. Um, NGOs, municipalities, fair foundations, Mm, associations they are welcome and this project specifically this project focuses i mean as, as you know this project focuses on on the reflect of the impact of the COVID 19 of the pandemic so this project came from another project what i was called urbac urbac is another program and it was based on volunteerism as well so the the, the network we thought why to stop here? I mean, let's continue, let's work together and try to, to take, to, to push this further, the volunteering, the volunteerism, because we all agree that in nowadays, the key for Europe uh, is solidarity and volunteering. There is no other way to, to make a better Europe. And that's obvious. I mean, now you're looking at the news and, and the way we all work countries. So, yeah. Do, do then young people within this project, they volunteer and help within local communities in Spain, in Altea or abroad? Well, in Altea, uh, when, when we started the program Urbac, we created um, a group of people that volunteering uh, with us that freely came to the meetings and they wanted to be part of any projects that we had, specifically the Urbac project. And after that, that it lasts for about two years, well, we, they decided that they wanted to be included in any program. So we came with this, with this program because we saw the importance of volunteerism because it, it became evident after the, or during the COVID-19 um, pandemic. And now that we offer, this program Volunteo, this project was approved. We offer the project to all youngest that they, they've got a lot of, um, they work with us a lot because we do a lot of uh, young mobilities, um, Erasmus plus uh, youth mobilities, and they all, they all wanted to be part of it. So in fact, we already done the kickoff meeting in Cyprus and we were about 32 people and most of them they weren't they were just volunteering young people that came from the different countries then we went to rotterdam that was a complete success and in about three weeks we just going to portugal so and young people from all these eight countries they 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 just come so it's three people per country so normally it's uh, the coordination which is us and i always bring with me some young person and the other countries they always send young people one person that will remain the same plus two people they're normally young people so we've got loads of debates round tables uh, blogs we do debates with politicians because what they have to say what the young people has to add to this project it matters it, we thought it is very important and 
from a previous project that we did, another third, we, we conclude that what they have to say, it is important. In fact, the project did end at the European Parliament and that was a complete success. That's why after that and after Urbac, we decided to go for this program again. Because mm -hmm. I think seriously, what is third, and I'm not saying that because I'm here, but the, all the programs that we work with, um, third is one of the best. Can, can I ask you just, you focus on young people, yeah? And now today we are talking about importance of their inclusion in local community. If I ask you, if you're, you wouldn't exist, if you wouldn't focus on young people, if municipality did nothing in this area, wouldn't apply, what would change for young people in Altia? Would, would, would their lives be worse? I, well, I, I, I don't know. I don't think it would be worse. It would be just the same as it normally, you know, it would be just the same. They, they wouldn't know because they, they wouldn't have the opportunity to experience um, Europe. Um, for me, it's as simple as that. Since we here, uh, this European project office, more than 100 young people uh, has been able to exchange, to have exchanges of experience, um, intercultural dialogue, European, they've got more European sentiment through culture, um, and we've done lots of um, youth exchanges and they are the ones asking for more. So I know by fact that uh, it changed their lives and it, can, it, it might sound like a topic, but uh, after five years, that is a fact that all the young people that come to this office, they already done three or four mobilities. They want, now they want to take one step further and it's like, okay, mobilities or um first the european corps of solidarity is fine but i want to do something else i want to improve i want to to see if there is any programs any more programs so we offer these kind of programs to them it's not 10 days or 12 months like the uh, european solidarity corps but they get involved in a two years project and that means a lot to them a lot because so it, in a sense, you are developing them as citizens, actually, as responsible citizens. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, we have an initiative, which is that we offer them to to teach them how to be a leader. We started like um, we offer if they want to lead a project, a, a group, being being the leader of a group for the youth mobilities exchanges. So when they say yes, we start, we, we teach them specifically, we, we tell them how to be a leader, we give them some um, information and we taught them how to manage projects. So they go abroad, let's say with minors, and they are the leaders of that group. And then after that, all by themselves, they come back that they want more because they like what they're learning because it's non-formal education and it's the, those aspects that you can't learn in high school. So I think all these projects, all these programs, they just giving them the opportunity to, to, to become more European because one of the things they all say when they come back is that they thought, uh, I don't know, Romania, Italy, Portugal, or the people from Slovenia were like they were, were told by their parents or television and it's absolutely nothing like that. So to me, that is great because we, we equal, doesn't matter. So we bring in people together. That's our mission. Thank you for that, Paloma Verdu. Uh, is there any question by everyone that is listening here? You can use the chat and just write something if you have a, a specific question you would like to ask. I will wait a bit. I know it's early, <laughs> maybe for some of you, for some of you, you are you're already hungry, waiting for lunch, but here we are. So if there is some question that you would like to ask, otherwise on that point, I would like to thank you and go to the next. Oh, we have a question from France. Thank you. Uh, what kind of youth did you reach? Um, okay, I tried to reach all. I have programs for minors that the um, Erasmus Plus, Plus, Plus give you the option just to, to send minors abroad for 10 days in exchange, exchange programs. Then I have TCs, training courses, no limit, 
So are they also young people? They can, I send people over 60 years old to a TC in Malta. Um, I send youth workers, psychologists, any kind. And then I have the youth mobilities for people between 18 and 30 years old. And then it's the European Solidarity Corps, which uh, you know is up till 30 years old, and they can be abroad for 12 months. So anyone that will really wants to have an experience and in the of social group, and in terms of social group, I don't understand yeah. the yeah. question. Yeah. Migrant. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, maybe I can try. Uh, hello, uh, thank you for your presentation. Um, I'm uh, Louis uh, from uh, Cipra France. Uh, Cipra France is uh, the la, la Commission Interna International Commission for the protection protection of the um, the Alps. Um, and uh, my question was, did you? Is it ah? How can I? Did you reach like everyone? Everyone in terms of um, uh, social group. When I say social, is like um, sometimes when we try to reach young people, uh, it's easier to reach people that uh, go to study uh, that have uh, a background, um, uh, a social background. How can I? Okay. Um, Maybe someone in the in, more, more educated, uh, more with more inventor. money because yeah. like the the, fa the 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 parents have a lot of money or um, okay. yeah, it's difficult to to ask the no, question in English. I think, I think yeah, I was just gonna say that it's like young people with the opportunities yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. we include yeah. them all. We include them all because as a municipality, we have the social services um, department. So. I try in every mobility to make sure that they send me a young person with a few opportunities. And it's amazing what this kind of programs can do to them because at the beginning, they feel really like they don't belong there. Obviously the level of English is not that good, but the group is what makes, you know, what makes them just uh, really change the perspective and make sure that they want to do something with their, with their life. Secondly, I normally go to the high schools, to the secondary schools to do some, well, we just, one day we just go and give a lecture and we teach, we, we show them with a, with a presentation what mobilities are and what we do every year, except the year of the pandemic, is um, a festival, we call it here, is called Erasmus Plus Day, a window to Europe. And last time we did it, we, have, we had more than 120 people coming. And I'm saying more than 120 people because we are in a culture house and the, 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 there is, you can't feed more than 100 people. So it was a complete success. And now it's, this, it's, the, it's the young people themselves that they bring their colleagues and their friends to, to ask for projects, to, to, to go abroad. And also I wanted to say, because you just, um, when you said about young people, I also want to add two programs. One is from the Erasmus Plus, which is the internship. They can go abroad and they can have a five up to six months um, trainingship experience in a company. And the greatest program yet for me is Eurodice, Eurodicea we call it, which is seven months, that's a contract with a contract. So the young people, it goes to, in, in, in let's say, young people, we come here from Brussels and from uh, Funchal, from Madeira for seven months, and they will be in Valencia one month learning Spanish, and then they will just come here to work for six months with a contract. And we pay absolutely nothing. It's all paid by the program. The same with the internship from Erasmus Plus. And this Erasmus is the, seriously, it's a program to, to look at because I managed to bring people from New Zealand and from Paris and uh, from Paris as well. Loads of people. So that's a great opportunity for young people because they have their, their first experience in work and they work in a municipality and they work in an international environment. So I highly recommend it. Thank you for that. Now it's time that we go to second best practice. It comes from Slovenia, from the city of Idria that is really active in fostering youth participation. Best practice will be presented by the mayor of the municipality, Mr. Tomáš Wenzel. Ladies and gentlemen, greetings from Idria. The municipality of Idria is where the young people are a key element 
in the postmodern society and that, when dealing with future plans, it is necessary to take it account to position interests and wishes of young people. Youth issues are society issues. They are issues that need to be discussed in society and are at the same time issues that reflect the status of society. Our municipality wants to, to strengthen its role in youth development and play an active part in developing the competencies and skills that enable young people to become independent and social, socially responsible people who help form the society. We want to strategically and systematically open possibilities for the young generations to participate in the cultural and political life in our community. We try to involve them in the preparation of youth policies and encourage their active participation in the implementation of measures. That was the introduction of the municipality and now the mayor will present uh, the project that focused on youth and engaging them in local communities. First, I would like to point out that this project ended four years ago. It took place between 2016 and 2018. And the people who were directly involved in it are currently not working at the municipality. As the mayor, and of course my colleagues, we continue to follow the results of the project. The governance and youth in the, and youth in the Alps was a project of several project partners from the Alpine Town of the Year organization, including our municipality. The aim was to enable young people to be more active in the political life. It promoted innovative methods in involving young generations in politics, public administration, and especially young civil society. The result of the project, project were, a, uh, were a comparative study of innovative democratic and participative practices in the Alpine space, a document called Tools of Participation. Seminars and workshops with decision makers in 12 Alpine regions and 12 local action plans for participation. Since our municipality was directly involved in the project, we are trying to incorporate these theoretical goals in practice as well. Okay, so that was short from the mayor about the municipality and its contribution. Uh, there are also municipalities that connect a lot of youth voluntarism with cultural heritage. It connects it. It has various uh, volunteers that come to the city of Idria each year and they help to restore a specific uh, cultural heritage site. And they are also really active and organizing hackathons on the solving of this cultural heritage problematics issues and challenges they are facing as municipality that has quite a lot uh, of elements of cultural heritage. The last practice that will be presented comes from Belgium. And now I have to take a deep breath because it's a long name. So Judith Vallop, you come from Yint, National Agency for the Erasmus Plus Youth in Action and the European Solidarity Corps programs for the Flemish community in Belgium. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's quite a lot. The institution you are coming from is doing an initiative called Europe Goes Local. The aim is to strengthen local youth work. Can you explain more what you do in practice? Yes, uh, thank you, Kaya, and uh, thank you so much for uh, being invited here. Uh, it's a pleasure uh, to be here and, and to speak about the, the project. Um, I'm uh, yes, I'm representing here uh, the big network project called uh, Europe Goes Local, and uh, 
this project is hosted uh, by the Flemish National Agency, as Kaya was introducing it. Um, this project started in uh, 2016, and uh, it was the initiative of Erasmus Plus National Agencies. So it's coming from the youth field, youth work field, uh, and, and uh, specifically from these uh, NEs. Um, and uh, why it was established? Because uh, uh, the national agencies uh, started to think that it would be very beneficial to involve more municipalities in the European programs uh, to, to create tailor-made uh, activities, uh, tailor-made support materials for municipalities, because uh, municipal youth work is, is probably the key for youth participation, for good youth work, uh, because youth work happens at the local level. And uh, of course, there are some national initiatives as well, but uh, mostly young people receive their primary support from the local level. So um, at the start, I think it was nine countries uh, that decided to, uh, to start this initiative and uh, to bring municipalities and those NGOs who work with municipalities together in, in one big network. And uh, by today, we have 26 countries on board from the EU program countries. And we also have um, 11 countries from the neighboring regions because uh, in the youth field, there are two uh, resource centers which work with uh, the neighboring regions. So we are also present in uh, Eastern Europe and the Caucasus and uh, the Western Balkans of, uh, uh, of, of, the, um, uh, of, of the two regions. And um, we would like to, our starting point is quality youth work. So it's not just about promoting uh, European opportunities, but uh, to help municipalities if they <laughs> would like to um, uh, work on their youth work provision or youth policy, for example. And uh, we would like to promote European opportunities to achieve this change at the local level. We would like to show that European tools, European programs, European funding can help a lot uh, to, to make change uh, in, at the local level. And uh, uh, for this purpose, we have uh, different activities and, and we also created some, some supporting tools uh, to, to achieve this aim. And at this moment, um, we have about uh, 200 uh, municipal uh, partners uh, all over Europe. But uh, yeah, if I can, I, if you are interested, I can talk more about the details of the of the project and how to get into it. Maybe what would be good because you have an overview of what municipalities are doing around Europe, what local communities <laughs> are doing. Can you maybe share some really good examples that we can all learn from? Yes, yes. Uh, as uh, as I said, our uh, our starting point is youth work. So, uh, and all the rest comes after that or, or to serve good youth work. Um, as I said, the European programs or, or European funding as well. So uh, to illustrate uh, with, with some uh, good practice. Um, Let me stop you before. When you say youth work, because we are different variety of yeah. uh, participants today here, what do you mean by youth work? Yes, uh, in the project, uh, we follow the European, the definition uh, of uh, some European policy documents, uh, um, the latest policy document uh, on, on this, uh, er in this area is the European Youth Work Agenda, and uh, that one says that uh, youth work uh, is um, um, a domain uh, which uh, happens independently from formal education. So it's not part of formal education, not part of social work, but works in cooperation with all these fields. Uh, and it provides uh, um, services and opportunities for young people uh, uh, in, in an extracurricular way and in which young people take active participation, take active role. So youth work is an out of school uh, opportunity based on the needs of young people. 
uh, and based on the active participation of young people. So it's a domain that helps young people to develop their skills, uh, to make them, uh, to help them in becoming active citizens of their communities uh, and uh, um, all kinds of uh, um, uh, areas where, where they would like to develop skills and knowledge. But it's, uh, it's an area which is not part of formal education and, and not part of other services uh, that work with young people, but Thank works you. in cooperation with all these to support the needs of youngsters. Thank you for that. Before you explain some good practices, I see a raised hand by my colleague, Maya Drubnea from SEP Slovenia. I will just ask Maya uh, if there is a question she has. Uh, Kaya, sorry, I actually didn't raise my hand. I don't know what has happened. Maybe but hi, Maya. It's great to see you, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Great to see you. <laughs> but Miss Bella, uh, can you can you continue with some good examples from? Yes. Uh, Thank you. Yes, yes. Uh, actually, we also did some uh, good examples with Maya, <laughs> so now I can, yeah, I can also speak about that. that but was uh, on purpose, you uh, yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> uh, but the first one I would like to mention, I think uh, that is really one of the flagship initiatives of of Europe Goes Local, is uh, an initiative from Croatia, and I don't know if uh, any of you are present who will recognize this initiative. But uh, uh, you need to know that in Europe goes local, uh, there are lots of activities happening at the European level in which we all cooperate. And there are also initiatives at the national level, uh, which are defined by uh, the national agencies and their municipal partners at the national level. So it happens really in the national context. So this good example that I would like to mention is, uh, uh, is a national initiative from Croatia. Uh, and uh, it's also import important to know that in Europe Goes Local, we created a tool, the European Charter on Local Youth Work, which is a list of key principles. And because this charter plays a key role in this good practice that I'm, I'm going to tell you about. Um, in Croatia, um, there is legislation about uh, good youth work and how to provide youth work. And uh, there are certain institutions also that provide support. But um, uh, there is an association of uh, Croatian cities and uh, the National Agency of Erasmus uh, of the Erasmus program uh, decided that they would need something more tangible, something more concrete for municipalities uh, for them to measure uh, how they provide youth work, what is quality youth work in the, in the municipal context. So they decided uh, to create a label uh, in, in Croatia for youth friendly cities uh, and cities can apply uh, to achieve uh, this label, this tag. And of course, to achieve this label, they have to, they have to fulfill some criteria uh, for providing good youth, good youth work. And uh, they used our European Charter on Local Youth Work to define this list of criteria uh, for, for, the, for these cities, uh, which gets the label. And uh, the, getting the label is based on applications and then the applications are uh, evaluated. And then if the uh, the town that applied uh, fulfills the criteria, then we'll get the label. Uh, so uh, this was an initiative to provide better youth work, uh, to have a systemic impact on youth work in Croatia. I would say this is one of the, maybe one of the most important uh, flagship activities. Thank you for sharing that. I will just, I don't know if it's again a mistake or if now it's a, a, another question from Ms. Leslie Pierat. Ms. Pierat, if you can hear me, you have a raised hand. I think that's a hand. <laughs> now I'm questioning if no, I think things not, right. I'm sorry, it's not. <laughs> it's not, okay. Thank you once again. So, yeah. Sorry, I just want to ask if maybe there is anyone from a Croatian municipality here who has this label, this youth friendly label, or, or not know. We have not. a participant from Croatia that maybe knows about what is being talked about. 
No, I don't think it's so. okay. Uh, I just uh, I was just curious uh, because we are quite many here uh, now. Uh, yeah. So this is this is one of the. Uh, yeah. There is a question. Uh, if you can exp explain more the youth charter with view to the concrete actions. Yes. Yes. Um, you can uh, you can find uh, our charter on our website europegoeslocal.eu and uh, as i said the charter is a list of key principles and um, uh, the charter doesn't uh, give you policy it's not a policy document that can just be implemented uh, uh, detail by detail, the work is still on the municipality to create its own structures and its own uh, um, its own policy document, its own organizational background. We just would like to give uh, some support with a, with some guidelines. And what is more concrete is that uh, we also created an online toolkit uh, to use this charter. It's also accessible from our website. Uh, this is called the Change Makers Kit, and uh, the Change Makers Kit is basically an online learning tool uh, or an online quality development tool. Uh, in the in the Change Makers Kit, you can find uh, all the topics of the charter and also tutorials, materials that can help a step by step approach. So, for example, if a municipality decides to uh, to start action, uh, uh, to create uh, youth strategies, to revise their uh, institutional background, to provide more space or, or more uh, structures for youth work, this Change Makers Kit uh, can help. Uh, in the Change Makers Kit, there are video tutorials, uh, there, are, uh, this, there is a description of policy background from the European level. There are also good practices that relate uh, to the different uh, uh, guiding principles. And uh, um, but we believe uh, that uh, change or, or uh, new developments come through dialogue between the different actors, most especially in a municipality. Lots of actors need to cooperate to achieve some change or, or to, to build quality. So we also created a section in, where you can find guiding questions uh, to, to start your uh, changing actions. And you can create your account. It's a very basic step. We don't collect any data from this. It's just some for you to log in. And uh, if you decide to take to really start a change making action, and you would like to create plans, for example, to do it, then you can make your own planning also uh, in, in the Change Makers Kit. And you can download it or you can keep it online and go back to it uh, anytime to, to check it. But so we created a, a quality development tool that can take municipalities through uh, a, a, a change making pl a planning and, and uh, uh, action. Uh, uh, creating activity. This is the this is basically the most concrete uh, idea, and you can decide to have your change making journey for a longer term, uh, really checking all the all the topics uh, of the of the charter. But you can also just decide to check one topic or one guiding principle, and uh, you can always come back to the change makers kit and the charter uh, to see where you are and and if you want to continue this action so it's it's a it's an online interactive tool for for uh, uh, local groups uh, of of stakeholders to start their own change making journey in in the policy and structural uh, level or in the municipal context thank you for that thank you for the presentations we strongly believe we can all share something So what we did today, we presented some good initiatives, good projects, uh, new initiatives were offered. Uh, we were trying to find some synergies and introduced hopefully to you some new funding opportunities that you maybe haven't heard or forgot about and now it clicked and was like, okay, maybe I can use that. Before we go, I would kindly ask you to fill one Mentimeter we, we have prepared for you.
I will share and uh, hopefully you will be able to click and see it right now. Yeah, so we have inspiring, interesting, active, excellent, resourceful, complete, engaging. There are some saying that it's short, but we're, we were afraid to have you for long in time, but that's good. It means there's still stuff to be talked about, collaborative, informative, connecting, rich. So thank you all for, for spreading and sharing what you have. We have one more slide for you prepared. So what will be your next step to foster youth participation in the future? So you will now go from this event, sit back on your seat and start working. So what's the to do, on your to-do list when it comes to youth participation? Yeah, so some of you are already answering that your step is going to be to write our project, to have a dialogue, again, to do projects. Then for City of Zagreb, it's really concrete. It's to prepare the individual plans related to participation in the Europe Goes Local. Interesting to have a group, focus group with young people to implement more projects and to involve more young people to create networks or join networks with local municipalities and schools. This is also our challenge and something we have on our to-do list always. Yeah. I would read that one, but it's behind the camera I have. So wait, uh, it's cooperation, podcast, escape room, gamification, town twin. Now in Slovenia, we have one escape room prepared on know the, the rights of uh, workers. So it's uh, an escape room that is just being active. And I think it's really a method that it's being more and more explored. Uh, town twinning, we heard a lot about that today. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, a comment that we also received is that citizen engagement strength could also be explored uh, for your projects. Again, this was a referation to room three and also room five. Yeah. So thank you for that. And I wish you a pleasant day. We will follow up this event by sending you all an, all an email so that you will also receive a video and maybe something else from us. Thank you for being here. Take care and good luck with everything you're doing.